Neuromodulation isn't a new concept. Modern use began with deep brain stimulation in the 1960s to try to address conditions or diseases that couldn't be treated through traditional medications or therapy. It requires an interdisciplinary focus between science, medicine, and engineering, with engineers playing a key role in combining the art and the science. So here are four areas that engineers have helped progress neuromodulation. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. An estimated one in five people globally faces chronic pain, and you may have seen a show like Painkillers or Dope Sick, which shows firsthand some of the negative side effects of modern medication. Recently, doctors and engineers at Carnegie Mellon figured out a way that transcranial focused ultrasound could be used for chronic pain. The ultrasound sends sound waves into our body and these sound waves interact with the electric signals our body is sending. In this case, the pain processing brain circuits. We don't realize that our body is sending electric signals all the time. And if you've ever gotten an EKG, it's actually measuring the electric signals of your heart. Now with teeth as in chronic pain, the challenge has been in identifying the device as well as the parameters, think frequency, duration, and intensity, because these are going to impact how our body responds to the treatment. The breakthrough came with a device. 128 refers to the number of materials that are producing, focusing, and steering the energy in the body, and random refers to how the materials are arranged. People have PTSD after they experience a traumatic event and then continue to experience the symptoms or the related emotions as a result of that event. This is common in veterans because of what they experience in war. Now, not all PTSD can be treated in the same way. And recently, they're seeing some breakthroughs with TMS specifically for PTSD experienced in veterans. TMS applies some of the fundamentals of engineering, magnets, and electricity. A magnet in the shape of a coil is placed in a helmet or in an arm-like device, which then gets placed on the outside of someone's brain. An electric current is sent through the magnet, which creates an electric field. And then you can influence the brain signals through the electric field replacing those of trauma with other emotions. Now they've known how to apply TMS, but they didn't realize until recently that they were applying TMS to the wrong place for PTSD experienced in veterans. They realized that veterans who have some sort of brain damage to the connection point to the amygdala experience less PTSD. So while not creating brain damage, they can use TMS to replace the brain signals in that area to reduce the PTSD. An estimated one in three people with major depressive disorder don't respond to treatment and are characterized as DTT. For these patients, they've been studying TMS as a treatment option, which is the same technique we talked about for PTSD, except how you apply TMS in one situation can be very different from how you apply it in another. For depression, TMS has been used since 2008, but the current approach took weeks for patients to see results. So Stanford developed its own approach in 2021 called the Stanford Neuromodulation Therapy. This approach uses a higher frequency of pulses in a different time period, and it takes a very customized approach to placing the magnet. Rather than placing the magnet in the same place on every patient, it uses a neuromap of their brain to study where the depression signals are overpowering other signals and then places the magnets accordingly. Now, even though they're seeing success with SNT, the current focus is on figuring out the science and engineering of it all because they can't quite figure out why this specific approach is seeing better results. Someone gets diagnosed with Parkinson's every six minutes. And for those who have seen it firsthand, like through the passing of my grandfather 20 years ago, you know that it can be a very painful disease. Essentially, the disease impacts people's motor skills. And what they're finding recently is it also impacts things like sleep and anxiety. And there's not a lot of great treatment options. Since the 1980s, deep brain stimulation has been used as an invasive neuromodulation approach where electrodes are implanted in the brain and a battery is implanted in another part of the body. The battery sends electric signals to the brain that controls the motor movement to prevent things like tremors. Now, because this is an invasive technique, it can't be used for every patient. There was a really interesting study that happened this summer that used a device that was actually created for urinary tract infections. Because Parkinson's is caused by a loss of nerve cells, this actually uses electricity to stimulate the nerve pathways to get the brain back in balance. The other interesting thing about this specific device is that it uses AI to allow doctors to customize the treatment. What a fascinating alternative to modern medicine and also a really interesting way that you could apply your engineering skills if maybe you're an electrical engineer, a chemical engineer, or a biomedical engineer. I'll see you next week.